I'm Tom Volk for EV Universe. The common complaint about electric vehicles is they just cost too much, but not all of them do. The Chevrolet Bolt EV starts at less than $27,000. This one, the Bolt EUV, that's a half a foot longer, costs an extra $1,500 and buys more rear legroom and a cleaner looking C pillar. It also drops range, but just a skosh to 247 miles, still respectable. This particular car with the Redline package is fully loaded. It's the most expensive Bolt that you can buy and MSRPs for under $38,000. Yes, that's with destination and before any tax credits. Plus, it's stuffed with creature comforts and technology, stuff that you won't find on cars costing $10,000 more. That includes a digital rear view mirror, heated and vented leather seats up front, uh, toasty cushions for your besties in back, and a Bose sound system that's unusually punchy considering the price and only seven speakers. Plus, there's Super Cruise, once exclusive to Cadillac. The Redline treatment, available on both the LT and this Premier model, means some crimson stitching, a different badge look, red stripes here and here on black wheels. Bolt is strictly front-wheel drive and frunkless. The motor makes 200 horsepower and 266 pound-feet of torque to move 3,700 pounds of automobile. The floor-mounted liquid-cool lithium-ion pack is 65 kilowatt hours. This updated battery is not GM's newest Ultium, and Bolt doesn't do vehicle-to-load transfer. On entry, the greeting is less of a tone, more of a gong. Both EV and EUV share this interior, and the drive selector gets this arrangement now. It's easy to get used to. All bolts get a sport mode that adds some heft to the steering weight. It's not just a red line thing. There's also one pedal drive mode that remembers your preference at startup. Plus this, to add even more recuperation drag, it's a clever setup. Redline is a trim package, so there isn't any additional power. I get it. General Motors is trying to keep the costs down. And really, 0 to 60 in an easy 7 seconds feels pretty good with this car. Remember, lots of low-end torque. Bolt feels pretty spunky off the line. You know how it is. Electric vehicles always feel faster than they are. And there's plenty of passing power here. One pedal driving is easy, or back it off if you want the dynamics similar to gas-powered cars we're all used to. For a lower-priced vehicle, Bolt EUV is very quiet, and that's great for listening to the Bose system. Redline having the sporty image, I kind of feel like there's a missed opportunity for an improved tire and suspension package to make it even sportier to drive. But still, the Bolt's the Bolt is fun to drive. You chuck it hard into a corner, and it's got that low center of gravity because of the heavy batteries in the floor. And one thing about this car, something that you'll notice, it's got an unusually supple ride quality. Even my wife noticed it soaked up bumps nicely, and she's not a car person. The longer wheelbase probably makes a difference. Stickier rubber would be a hoot. It would also drop range, and buyers are sensitive about that. Bolt EUV has slightly less of it than Bolt EV. This one's rated at 247 miles. It's been cold this week in the low 30s, so I'm definitely not going to be getting that range. Closer to 220 that's the way electric vehicles work, folks. And really, that's not bad for an affordable vehicle. It's not just range that's important. People that travel often will want a high max charging speed with a good charge curve. Compared to most EVs out there, Bolts is pretty pokey, around 55 kilowatts. So no matter what kind of terminal it's plugged into, that's the fastest it'll juice up. 10 to 80% will take just over an hour. Ionic 5 does that in around 20 minutes. But remember, that's at 350 kilowatt terminals, and those aren't all that popular. As always, temperature is a factor when charging. EVs are not for everyone, especially for those without access to easy charging. Slow charging speed at DC fast chargers like this is Bolt's Gilly's heel. No doubt about it. If you often take long road trips or you can't charge where you sleep, then this could be an issue. However, if you do charge at home, 
then it's not an issue because it just charges up overnight, just like any other EV. Know that GM throws in home charger installation or opt for a $500 EV Go credit. Both of the Bolt models have a new interior that's more conventional and doesn't look like white styrofoam anymore. Only a hard look and in 4K tells if this is real or fake stitching, and materials are soft to the touch. The look is definitely normal, addressing a common complaint that EVs always look like spaceships. The bird's eye camera system has some solid optional views. The large glass roof is part of the $2,500 sun and sound package. The Navi system that comes with it is connected, meaning there's a data charge for full functionality. The 10 inch screen houses a user interface that's deceptively well done. It's helpful for getting to functional charging stations, but there are apps like Chargeway. And there's a standard Qi charger that pairs well with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, another thing that some expensive vehicles don't offer. There's lots of storage down low, a consolation to the lack of a frunk. Uh, plastics down here are kind of budget grade. There is some cost cutting in this vehicle. That's to be expected. It's the way the auto industry has always worked and always will. You don't get luxury car features and materials in a mainstream vehicle. Still, a Bolt loaded to the gills is trying pretty hard to muscle in on upscale vehicles. Bolt EUV's advantage over Bolt EV, jeez, oh, that's so confusing, is a back seat with three inches of extra legroom. I'm five foot nine and I have plenty of knee and legroom. The heated back seats have good thigh support. I would check headroom on the test drive, especially if passengers you like are on the tall side. Phones can be charged, no separate climate zone or adjustable vents, that's sign of an affordable car, but the floor is flat, so footroom is great when squeezing three in, it's best for two adults. The security cover stashes in the car when hauling big things. There's no spare, but the only thing positive I can muster up here is that it frees up space. The dual voltage charge cord is standard. Choose between covered storage and max cargo room. There's 16.3 cubic feet, that's around five carry-on suitcases. It's an easy reach to drop the seat backs. That opens up 57 cubic feet, not bad for a smaller vehicle. And if you want a totally flat floor, it's a thing in the EUV. Bolt's image still suffers from the black eye of the battery recall, but kudos to GM for making things right for customers. And word is, Chevy can't keep up with demand for the Bolt these days. Bolt continues to be an excellent value when it comes to electric vehicles, which makes up for its slow DC fast charging rate. And that doesn't even matter if you're always charging at home. The only real miss I see is because this is the sporty redline version, it doesn't have an enhanced handling package, but that's just me. I've always wanted kind of an electric GTI. This could be it. Both of the Bolt models are affordable EVs for the masses, but no, the only way to get the Redline fashion statement is with the EUV. For EV Universe, I'm Tom Bolt.